You know, I think the bullets from my Ruger single six are entering the barrel crooked. And we're going to use this elaborate setup here, including the eight foot step ladder, to find out if my hypothesis is true. I hope you'll stick around. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure, share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And yes, I hope at the end of the day today, we will have smiled at this adventure and learn something at the same time, because I've got a uh, test set up here that we're going to shoot at least six rounds from this Ruger Single 6 22 Magnum down into this 39-inch water column. To us. And then we're going to recover those bullets and see if we can tell whether or not they're entering the barrel crooked. Um, and so uh, I've got quite, this, quite the uh, setup here. I've got an underwater slow motion camera that I hope will capture some inter interesting images. We need some auxiliary lighting for that. And of course my eight foot step ladder. So uh, before I actually start shooting, I need my assistant to tell you why we think the bullets might be going into this barrel crooked. Assistant, give me a break. I signed that guy's checks. But seriously, before we take a look at the at why I think the bullets might be going into the the uh, barrel crooked, I want to give you a close up look at the uh, function of the cylinder, cylinder rotation, and cylinder lockup because it's it's pertinent to our discussion about the crooked bullets. So I'm going to play some video that I uh, posted for my patrons a few weeks ago and uh, just give you a close-up close up look at how everything functions in that revolver to uh, make things line up. Okay, let's take a quick look at how, at how the revolver works. And most of you guys are going to know this already, but I'll go through it anyway. On the back of the, uh, bump my camera here, on the back of the cylinder, yeah, there, there's this this uh, star wheel right here, and it has notches that are engaged by the hand of the revolver. And as the hammer is cocked, the hand rises and it pushes up on that notch until it indexes a new chamber ready for firing. Then the hand drops down, it'll pick up another notch, it'll rotate until the next chamber is lined up with the bore. And so there's some fine tuning that goes on to make sure that the engagement of the hand here, when it finishes its upward movement, gets the bore properly aligned, the uh, cylinder properly, properly aligned with the bore of the gun. Now let's take a look at the hand that does this work. And you can see it. It, it has two, two stages in this revolver. And there is the first one right here. And when I pull back on the hammer, it begins to rise up. It grabs one of those notches that we looked at just a minute ago. And then once it gets too high, it pops off. And then this lower notch engages and finishes the rotation of the cylinder. And so again, the location of this surface right here is critical to get the revolver to get the cylinder rotated and held in place properly properly aligned with the bore. And I left out one critical function, but once the hand is at its uppermost position, it will rotate the cylinder far enough to present one of these cylinder notches right here. There's six of them, of course. It will present that cylinder notch here to the bolt and the bolt is spring-loaded, and so as the cylinder rotates around until that cylinder notch is over the bolt, then the bolt pops into place. And that provides the final location of the cylinder from a rotational perspective. Well, I hope that uh, look inside the functionality of the cylinder rotation and lockup was, uh, was helpful. And before we go any further, I just want to remind everyone that this whole series, this, I think this is the fifth video I've done on this, on this revolver, this gun came from a pawn shop, and it's 53 years old. We don't know anything about its history. 
And one thing we could see from this last little bit of video uh, footage that you saw is on the back wall of the, of the uh, cylinder opening on the frame itself, there were some pretty bad gouges there where a non-professional had made what looked like some modifications to the hand or the pawl. And so the fact that this gun is not shooting well, I don't attribute it all to a quality issue with Ruger. And so I just wanted to make that clear. And if you've paid attention to my channel, we like Ruger revolvers and I feature several here in the last months. So with that said, let me turn on the bore scope and let's look inside through, and we've got the Ruger single six here on the table. The bore scope is already set up. It's taped down so that the bore scope is, um, is not going to rotate on us. And in the images, images that you're going to see here in just a minute, when you look at that bore chamber alignment, the 12 o'clock position is actually up on the revolver. And so with that said, let me turn on the test, the test long bore scope. And so don't pay attention to the gold in the image. That's all. Um, the gold dots are unburned powder. Uh, the large black area, and I'll pop in an arrow here so you can see what I'm talking about. That's actually the chamber of the cylinder and one of the chambers. And then I'll pop up another arrow here that shows the end of the rifling itself, the end of the lands. And then with inside of that, there is kind of a, a, a more of a gray area. And I'm going to wiggle the chamber a little bit so you can see that gray area, not the part that's moving, but the part that's just inside the, the um, barrel, the bore, that area of light gray, which the arrow was pointing at, is actually the forcing cone. And so you can see in that image that with this chamber, that the chamber is actually high and right relative to the center line of the barrel. And I'll go through the other chambers real quick. And you can see that in every case, the chambers are high and right relative. Relative to the barrel. Now, one thing you can notice Going back to the to the uh, forcing cone, you can see that the chamber is still inside of the forcing cone, and so that's why we're not shaving any lead because the bullets are not are are in, at least entering the forcing cone, but they are not entering centered to the barrel, and so that gets gets us back to the question: Are the bullets going into the barrel crooked? If they're getting redirected linearly into the barrel, then that shouldn't be an accuracy problem. If they are getting bounced around and, and going in crooked, then they're gonna come out crooked and they're gonna be doing all kinds of crazy spinning. And so did I do that right? And so uh, that's why we have set up this test outside to see if we can capture a bullet and then on close inspection, will, be, will we be able to tell whether or not the uh, bullet has gone down the bore straight or at least lined up with the bore. And I wanna thank Mr. Ron Power because he gave me the idea for doing this. And um, so it's just a, a version of a test that he ran on a, on a revolver of his own some time ago. So with that said, let's get back out to that guy who thinks, still thinks I'm his assistant. And, um, and let's do, uh, we'll let him do some shooting and we'll see if we can't capture those bullets along with that underwater slow motion.
Okay, let's see if I can get those bullets out without losing them in the grass. Okay, there they go. There's five bright shiny bullets. Let's go inside and see what they look like. Well, that guy looked at those six bullets and said there were five, and that's why I still write the checks around here. But let me clarify a term that we've kicked around, and it's about the forcing cone. Some of you guys and girls may not know exactly what we're talking about. But on the entrance end of the barrel, where the bullets go into the bar barrel from the chamber, there's actually a funnel. I'll pop up a picture right here, and you'll be able to see the ring around the entrance of the barrel on the back side. And that's actually a very shallow funnel that funnels the bullets into the barrel. And Mr. Ron Power told me that the bullets can be off by as much as three and a half, we'll say four thousandths of an inch one way or the other, and entering that forcing cone, the accuracy won't be affected. Um, and so the question is how much, how off are we with this Ruger single six? And I'll show you in just a minute. But first things first, let's take a look at these bullets. And it, you have to, and it's hard to see, but, um, but as I spin this, the, this bullet, and they're all just about identical, as I spin this bullet around in my hand, you can see on one side the, uh, the rifling goes just in front of the cantilever, and, and then once I rotate it around, there's no rifling up there at all. And, um, and all of them, like I said, all of those bullets, and I actually shot three different groups of six bullets into, into that water over the last few days just working up this video. They're all just about identical. And so there is definitely something going on. Those bullets are going into the, into the forcing cone. They're striking the forcing cone in a way that it's upsetting the bullet, causing it to yaw as it goes. And I'm gonna pretend like the camera is the barrel and so the, the um, bullet is wanting to go in here. It's hitting the forcing cone and then it's going into the barrel with a yaw or basically it's going in crooked like, not that much, but maybe like this. And so that, when, when that bullet hits the rifling, it doesn't straighten up, it actually deforms the bullet. And the uh, copper jacket on these 22 Magnum rounds is very thin. And you can even see it in another way. And I've got a picture that I'll pop up here. And you can see that the base of the bullet is not square to the sides of the bullet. So it's another indication that these bullets are really getting messed up going from the chamber into the rifling. And so that transition is, uh, is causing us real grief. So it's pretty clear, um, even from a layman's perspective, that you're not going to get great, um, uh, great accuracy. Actually, you're going to get very poor accuracy when your bullets are that deformed. And that would even be more um, accentuated if we were shooting at ranges, because all the videos where I've done shooting, all of the ranges have been at 16 yards or closer even in the very first video that I did. So terrible accuracy, um, and it's all because the bullets are going into the barrel crooked. So, how much off are we? 
Well, let me set up and I will show you. I think I can demonstrate, give you a, uh, uh, I think I can give you a good idea of the dimensions that we're talking about. And I found a way to do this because one of the things that you noticed in the, um, in the pictures of the chamber as it rotated through, the chamber was always, from your perspective, from the camera's perspective, the chamber was always up and right compared to where the barrel itself was. And so, yes, I can do some gunsmithing to, to uh, fix the, the hand and the cylinder stop to bring that cylinder or that chamber more in line up and down or, or side to side so that the bore and the cylinder are going to be in line with one another. But I still have that vertical problem because the chambers are all higher than the bore. And, uh, and so I'm going to show you how much that is right now, and then we can translate that amount of movement to show you how far off we are left to right, which is quite a bit more than we are off up and down. So let me get set up and we'll take a quick look at that. Okay, I've got the uh, borescope set up again. And we're looking through the, obviously we're looking through the Ruger single six again at the face of the cylinder. And I've got two feeler gauges here. Those are just really thin pieces of precision ground stainless steel. One of them is 11,000 thick and the other is 15,000 thick. And so let's take a look at our, at our test long image right here. And as you could see, it's the same, same as we looked at before. The, uh, the image, the uh, chamber is high and right. And so I'm going to take the 11 thousandths shim and I'm going to drop it down right here between the between the cylinder and the top of the frame and you and then if you'll watch the image you'll see that the cylinder does not move very much at all and if I put a 12 thousand shim in there then it makes the cylinder move down and so we're going to call that our go gauge our no go is 15 thousandths and I actually have to force this through that slot and you can see that the that the, the chamber moved down and so now we're basically and I've moved it artificially into the center and so just by moving four thousandths of an inch I'm going to take the shim out by moving four thousandths of an inch we move we have moved down that far. And so I'm going to guess left to right we're we're at least six or seven thousandths off left to right. But that's what we would like to have right there is the chamber exactly concentric, exactly concentric with the uh, barrel. And so it doesn't make sense. Now where do we go from here? Well with the barrel, with the bore that, or with the uh, chambers that far above the rifle or the, the uh, barrel, it doesn't make sense for me to take those really nice components that I got from Power Custom. That's the, the new hand, Paul, and the cylinder stop. Modify those to make those, that chamber line up left to right when it will never line up up and down. And so I'm gonna take a look at replacing at some point, replacing the barrel with this guy and see if and see where the bore lines up relative to those chambers. So we've got more work to do, but my goodness, it has been fun so far. And for the faithful, you faithful guys and girls that have stuck with me through all of this, it's been awesome. I guess I'll just say, hey, thanks for watching. And um, and I've gotten some new uh, some new Patreon supporters this week. Uh, I want to welcome you guys and uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, don't forget to hit that like button. It, uh, it really matters. I keep saying that over and over again, but for YouTube, it really matters. So if you have stuck around this long, you're either very tolerant or you've somewhat liked the video. And so please <laughs> click on that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Click, hit that little bell. YouTube says you'll get notified every time I upload a new video, which is usually on Tuesday. And so I will see you guys and girls 
in the next video.